fellow foodies, this is Kelly with Gia's Italian Kitchen. We're starting a little late. I uh, had some technical challenges, but we're on now. So welcome. And uh, this is the challenge, food challenge number three. So if you have not done uh, the first two, you can find those in the Facebook page um, some other time. And they are amazing. We did some chicken. We did some pesto. Uh, and, and a variety of other things. So definitely check those out um, another time. So tonight we are going to make the um, roasted vegetable lasagna and the infamous Herbie Wallbanger cake. Um, so the first thing I want you to do is get your oven on and then we'll, we'll chat a little bit. So the oven for um, the roasted vegetables and the tomatoes, 425. So do that right now and get that going. And we're going to just jump right into that and then we will chat as we go along because uh, we need to get those vegetables in the oven so that we can eat. Um, we're, you know, we're aiming for about an hour. So I'm going to grab all of these beautiful cherry or, and grape tomatoes. So we're aiming for about um, two pounds, you know, more or less. What this is going to make is the sauce. So this is going to be a really nice base for um, for a variety of things. Um, we're not going to cook this on a stovetop like you would classically do for um, a marinara. We're going to roast the tomatoes and then put them in the Cuisinart. So it can be a nice starter that you can add meat to or um, add to other dishes um, without um, having to make that, that day-long sauce. So um, the first thing that we need to do to prep these is the garlic. So. Um, for for all of you out there, for all of you out there, um, this is Gia's Italian Kitchen. Um, quick tr quick tip um, for your weekend. So you know you could be making a stir fry. You could be making this beautiful sauce. Um, but most things start with garlic, right? So you can buy the the big um, bulb of garlic. I like to buy these pre shocked because it's saving me time. But what we're going to do is throw this whole bag into this little Cuisinart and then pulse this. So we don't want it to be pasty, but we want it to be um, chopped. Maybe. Bread. Let me get a bowl. I don't think this is on. Hang on. Ah. Oh, I don't think my blade is on. Okay, start over, start over. There, it clicked. Did you hear the click? Now it's on. Okay, now the blade's in. And we're throwing all of that garlic in. And we're going to pulse it. To get that dice. And you want it pretty fine, but you don't want it to be a paste. And that's it. It's pretty much done. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in a jar. This is my favorite part. Is this your favorite part? This is this is such a good cheat because, you know, when you're cooking dinner, the garlic is messy, right? Everyone has, like, contraptions that you get in your stocking, right, at Christmas on how to shut garlic really easily. It's just a mess. And this is going to cut such um, such time and mess out of your dinner prep. So I'm putting this just in a jar and then what I'm going to do is add some extra, some good extra virgin olive oil. You gave, and I know. You gave me some of this as a gift <laughs> and I just used it the other day after you do the secret part I was able to use it. So The exciting. secret part is, is awesome. So you're basically filling this up to the top um, of the garlic with olive oil. That's it. And then we're going to put this in the fridge for a couple weeks or in the freezer for up to two months. And it's going to keep. And then all you need to do when you're ready for your sauce or a stir fry or whatever, you're going to just take this and throw it right in your saucepan. Done. So that's your quick tip from G's Italian Kitchen on how to save time with garlic. Okay. So I'm going to take a little bit of more, a little more of this. And I'm just going to keep going with this little jar because we're going to use the garlic in um, with the tomatoes and with the roasted vegetables. So I'm going to just cover this whole thing. 
And really, this is subjective. Um, if you love garlic, you know, you can put as much on here as, as you want. But if you are not a fan and you want just a little accent of a flavor, just use one tablespoon or so. It's really, it's up to you how much you want to use. So I'm just going to grab, I'm going to grab a saucepan, or I'm sorry, a, uh, a cookie sheet. Now you want to use it with edges, not, not a flat cookie sheet, um, because we are going to have a lot of liquid going on here. And we're just going to throw all of these tomatoes on here. And we're going to roast these. And we're, we're roasting them whole, so we do not need to cut these. Um, you can use cherry. You can use grape. I wouldn't use beefsteak or big ones um, because they're just a lot meatier. These are um, a little sweeter, and so um, they're going to turn out a little different. It doesn't really matter that much, but I just I prefer the grape um, or the um, cherry. So I love garlic. Um, how are you guys with garlic? My dinner party here in the kitchen. Delicious. Okay, okay, we're good. So I'm putting like a couple heaping, couple heaping tablespoons, and I'm just gonna stir these. And if you've watched previous episodes, the best way to stir is with your hands. So I'm going with the hands and then I will wash to get these. Because we didn't put anything down on the pan, so you do want to kind of get these kind of covered so that... Um, I mean, Kelly, throw another spoonful. <laughs> another spoonful. No, that was true. Okay. It's a lot of garlic. Um and that's really all that we need. If you wanted to add a little salt, you could. Um, so let me just wash my hands here. And if you only have one oven, since we aren't really baking, um, you, you can put both of these trays in. So we're going to do this tray with the tomatoes, the other tray with the roasted vegetables. You can put them both in the same oven. It really does not matter. Oh, I just stepped on a tomato. Okay, I'm putting these in so that they can get going, and I'm going to put a timer on for 25 minutes, and then I'm going to grab um, the vegetables. Can you grab me a paper towel? Do you want Sorry, to I've got like some water in your water when you cut the squish. Um, yeah, yeah. So the other thing that we could get going is. Um, the water for the lasagna noodles. So we're going to cook these for just a few minutes because they're obviously going to cook in the oven. Um, we just don't want them crunchy, so we're going to cook them for maybe five or ten minutes. So just get your water going. And then we will start chopping up our veggies. So we've already washed all these. And this is my kooky little way of cutting a uh, bell pepper so that I don't get all of these seeds. So I cut, actually let me start over. I cut down the side first, away from the seed, and then just turn them so that the seed ends up on the inside and I'm cutting all the way around. And then my pepper, like there's all of it, and my peppers are clean. So it's just an easy way to, to cut them instead of, you know, some people cut them in half and then it's just a mess with all the seeds. So um, let me get those all cut. And if you have a helper in the kitchen, like one of your kids, you know, or your spouse or your friend, um, this is a great thing that they can help with is to just chop some vegetables. So um, feel free to do that, instill some help. And because we're going to cut up all of these. Now, how big do you want these cut? They're really, um, you want them kind of small because they're going to end up uh, in multiple layers in the lasagna. So you do want them pretty tiny um, so that when you have a bite-sized piece of the lasagna, you're not just getting this huge chunk of, um, of, of veg uh, one vegetable. So I'm just... Slicing these. Oh, and then we need to do that. So after, remind me, after we get these in the oven, um, 
we're going to do the drink. So the dessert tonight is that Harvey Wallbanger cake. And uh, depending on how old you are, you may have never even heard of this Harvey Wallbanger. But it was a famous drink in the... Yeah, see, we're not even that... We're not that young. And uh, some of the folks here have not, have not even heard of this. Um, but it was a drink in the 50s. Um, I think in the 50s. Um, so it's it's uh, distilled in Italy and then bottled in Holland. So it does say Holland on there, but it's made in Italy. Um, and it's just this beautiful liqueur of um, black licorice with um, hints of citrus, orange citrus, and vanilla and lavender. It's a really nice, um, really nice liqueur. So if... Um, if you really despise black licorice, you may not, you may not like this. Um, so if if you, I did have a couple comments uh, throughout the week of um, people who didn't know that they didn't didn't like the black licorice. You know, you could as we get into the cake, you could um, go find some triple sec, and you could make the cake with the triple sec. Um, if, um, probably, yeah. Why not amaretto? Yeah. Um, you know, the liqueur is is a little thickening agent for the cake, but it's also to flavor and to sweeten. So really, yeah, kind of um, your liqueur of choice could, could also work. Now, if you um, did not want to do alcohol, you could substitute the liquor, because we've got vodka and the liqueur um, in that cake and in the glaze. Um, you could just add some more orange juice to your cake. Um, so we'll, we'll go through that when we get there, but, um, you know, keep in mind that the alcohol in the cake is going to cook off and then you could just exclude it from the glaze if you don't want that alcohol. So I'm just grabbing my other, um, big cookie sheet with sides again, cause we're really going to load this up with the vegetables. There goes my ice maker. <laughs> my ice maker sounds like a dying animal so if you're if you hear some squealing on the side it's my ice maker no worries um okay so we've got these two beautiful bell peppers and you can use any color you want you can use green too green just has less of a sweet taste but you can use whatever colors you use so I'm just throwing these right on the pan because we're going to do kind of the same thing um, to roast them with the garlic and olive oil. So we don't really need anything down on the pan to start. All right. So we've got two vegetables down. So as we're cutting, as we're doing any of this, we have a few friends here on the sidelines helping me. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you. I cannot do this alone. It takes a, a team. So one, one of the gals is monitoring the chat in the Facebook. So if you have questions or comments throughout this event, please do feel free to put comments out there um, so that we can shout out and get you some answers real time if you have any questions while you're cooking. Um, so while you're watching me cut all these up, hopefully you're cutting as well. But if you do have someone or you have the computer in reach, um, I know we've got some people here tonight from Portland, Oregon. We've got Chicago. We've got Florida. Um, so Colorado. do me a favor, Colorado, put in the chat. Just tell me what city you're in so that we can kind of get a scope of where you guys all are because this is so exciting to have all of these fans out there. So just throw in the chat. Where are you? Where are you dialing in from? Okay, so right now I've got a zucchini. I'm leaving the skins on and I'm cutting them into little bite-sized triangles. So I cut them long-wise, lengthwise, whatever that correct word is, twice. So let me, I'll do that again with this other one. And then I just diced them. So let's take the other one. I'm taking the and we've washed all of this. So we're taking both ends off and I'm putting them, this is my uh, compost bowl here. And I'm doing 
lengthwise this way, and then again. So I end up with four long spears. Then my dicing down the, the length is going to be really easy. So I'm going to just cut once and then I get the four, four easy little triangles. So I'm going to just finish this one. Oh, that garlic is making me hungry. I, I can smell it. Yeah. Why do you waste this part? The end? Well, that looks like a whole bunch. Is that, is Did I cut off too much? Is there a reason? I'm no, I just asking. wanted to cut off okay. the, the, um, the okay. stem of yeah. it. But yeah, I could definitely just take one more. No, I could take one more little slice and save it. Let's make a richer compost. I just thought maybe it was sour on the end. No, no, no reason. Just, uh, just chopping off the edge there. I'm not throwing it in the garbage, so I don't feel bad. <laughs> I'm putting it in my compost, so. Okay, now we've got this gorgeous eggplant. So I am gonna cut this top off because I do not want the edges. Um, and the bottom little boot. Okay, so with eggplant, um, like many, um, like a squash, like that huge squash. I don't know if you can see that in my window. That's a butternut squash. The skinny part of it has less seeds and the fat part has more seeds. True with the eggplant as well. If you don't like the seeds of the eggplant, just start at the skinny end and let's slice it. Well, I'm gonna slice it like this so you can see the inside. But you can see how the seeds, not hardly any, and then as you get down to the fat side, more, 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 more seeds. I'm gonna use the whole thing because I love eggplant, but if you um, don't like eggplant, Maybe just don't go down so far where it's super seedy. Um, what do the seeds do to the taste, Kelly? I don't think they they do a whole lot, but I do think it makes it a little more meaty. Okay. Um, and if you don't like the flavor of the eggplant, you may or may not really even be able to tell because we've got so much going on in this lasagna. You know, if you were doing like an eggplant parmesan or um, you know, just some other, um, you know, grilled eggplant, obviously um, that might make a difference for you. It's probably not going to make too much difference um, tonight. Okay. So um, now this, with since it's got like that big butt at the end, I'm going to cut this in eight little thing, eight, eight little strips instead of four like I did for the um, zucchini. And then I'm just going to cut down the edges here and make little triangles. And don't stress about the size of these because they're all going to roast and then they're gonna get squishy in our lasagna. So it does not have to be any uh, perfect shape. You just want them relatively bite-sized. And watch your fingers as you go so you don't, we don't want any blood because that would taste gross <laughs> in the lasagna. So be careful with your knife. <laughs> <clears throat> well, when my mom was here um, a few weeks ago, she sharpened all my knives, which I'm not uh, very religious at doing. So thanks, Mom. I know you're out there. Um, she's uh, Mom is, is down with my cousins uh, right now. So hello to, to my cousins and my mom. But she sharpened all my knives. So I'm, I just thought of that as I started cutting because I don't want to chop off because they're nice and sharp now. Okay, so this is the second half of the eggplant. And as you can see, our tray is getting pretty full. So having the edges on your cookie sheet is uh, definitely a must. And if you don't have a cookie sheet with edges, you could use like a big casserole dish too. It doesn't really matter what you're using. You just want something so all of the vegetables and the liquid uh, doesn't fall off the edge. Okay, last vegetable, red onion. So the other um, fun fact, I do not know how to do that, the fan. You know how they do that on TV where they cut the onion and then all of a sudden they have like 500 little, oh, I don't know how to do yeah. that. So maybe you can show me that later. <laughs> I, no, I've tried, I've tried and it's a disaster. But actually, I think since, um, since my mom um, sharpen my knives, it might work. So I'll try it later. 
But for now, I'm just doing it my regular way. When so, do you know you want to use like a red onion and, or a, like a Vidalia or like a white or a yellow? What, what kind of dictates that? Um, the yellow is going to get more sweet as you um, cook it. Okay. This is still going to have a little bit of a bite, so definitely it's a preference. Um, raw, obviously this is going to be really um, strong. Uh, so if you don't like the red onion, for sure, you can use a Vidalia or a yellow. It'll just be a little sweeter once it's cooked than this will. Um, so yeah, preference, good question. Mm -hmm. So my water is boiling. I'm just going to turn this off. Or no, I'm not going to turn it off. I'm going to put the noodles in. Kelly, your pan looks fancy. What's not going on on that lid? Oh, it's awesome. It's So I twist it, and it has the strainer on the top. Can you guys see that? Yeah, it's got the strainer on the top. So when we're done, I'm just going to dump this whole thing out, and it'll kind of self-strain itself. So I have um, just store-bought lasagna noodles that I'm going to put in. We want, ideally, about 12, because um, we're going to do three layers of four in the casserole dish. So I'm just going to count these. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I'm going to make two extra in case um, I kind of judged my pan wrong. Um, and I'm going to put these in. The other cool thing about this pan is these are going to go break down. Well, after they soften. <laughs> after they soften, they're going to go down. But they almost fit. They almost fit. So we're going to let those start. And, um, you know, they're only going to cook for, well, after they, after they fall, um, less than 10 minutes. Because we don't want to actually cook the pasta. We want to just soften it up. So for these onions, I'm dicing these pretty small so we don't get big chunks of that in a bite. And then we're going to toss these as well with the olive and garlic, olive oil and garlic. The kitchen is such amazing, isn't it? It does. Oh my gosh. So it really good. does. And I love red onions, so now that I'm cutting these, mmm, yummy, yummy. Watch your fingers. Okay. So we'll get those on there and toss this up. And then we're going to... Chris Wilson, this was your brother? Yeah. Make myself? Uh, oh yes, it does. Okay. Okay. It does well, what is he? What is he commenting? He just said he was. This was your brother. Oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for joining. Okay, so that was like three heaping tablespoons of garlic. I'm gonna add a little bit more because we've got a lot of veggies here. See how fast? Look at my place and art. <laughs> that bag of garlic is almost gone. I have one more in the fridge that I'm gonna chop up later because I'm going to put this back in my fridge for that trick to um, have this ready. But I wanted to show this for you guys tonight so that you also know the trick. Okay, so I'm just going to... You guys okay if I just dump all this? Okay. <laughs> Dumping. Okay, and I'm using my hands again because using your hands just gets everything better mess. you're telling them you are and it just the spoon does not do the same our, uh, this is so colorful we've got the reds the oranges the purple from the onion kind of the black from the outside of the eggplant and the green from the outside of the zucchini it's so pretty that is a lot okay let me wash my hands and then that is going in the oven So how are you guys doing out there? What I want you to um, also do in the chat, if you need me to repeat anything or slow down, throw that in the chat so that I know um, how you guys are doing out there. Because with this many people, um, yeah, I know you guys are all muted, but that chat is your way to yell out to me and then um, these folks will yell out so that I can answer you. Okay, so I'm going to just move one of my racks. Oh, those tomatoes. 
They're almost exploding. Okay, in goes my gorgeous tray of veggies. Same oven. Now my tomatoes are also, all that liquid from the tomatoes is kind of oozing out, which we want, because when we put it in the Quasinart, that's gonna be our sauce. So we want that, but it, if, you're, if you see that uh, in, your, um, in your tray, that's a good thing. Okay, so let me just get rid of this little guy. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about the Galliano. All right. Somebody just asked if you pour the liquid off of the tomatoes. You just no, 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 no. Leave the liquid in there. the The tomatoes should be popping open and roasting and getting brown. You want that's good. That's a good thing. And the liquid is coming onto the pan. That's good too. We want all of it, and we're gonna use it to make our sauce. So just let it hang out. It is totally fine. Okay. So let me unplug this. I'm gonna plug this in. So I have my other Cuisinart. A bigger one that we'll use to make that sauce when those come out. So I'm just going to get rid of any get history this out of the way. any of your tools today. History and my tools. Family history or anything. Um, my so my daughter is Gia. For for those of you who who are new tonight, um, she picked out the little poison art because it's blue. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, I don't know this. You no, know, I have um this the big poison art there. It's in the camera. Um. That's a food processor. I, I just, I love that. Um, it has, um, you know, attachments to, we're going to chop. It has attachments to grade and slice. And um, so this is like a must if you don't have one of these. Um, if you have a little one, you can use the little one. It's just going to take you a few times to make that sauce. Um, and then the other thing I have here that isn't in the camera yet, but is the KitchenAid mixer for the cake. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but if you have a hand mixer, that'll work too. So, um, okay, so where are we? You should have your water boiling and you should have both the tomatoes and the roasted veggies in the oven. Oh, look, my, my pasta finally fell. Okay, so I'm just going to give these a little stir. So now all of them are perfectly standing up in the pan. <laughs> so if somebody could time me on maybe five more minutes on the pasta and then we'll strain those, um, and let them cool off for um, for the assembly. So I did get quite a few questions um, by email and by post on the Galliano. So um, like we talked earlier, you may have not ever heard of this, and we're going to use maybe a cup of it for the cake. So then what are you going to do with the rest of the bottle? So um, I wanted to show you. Um, could you do me a favor? Could you grab the orange juice out of that fridge right there? It's on the right-hand side. Um, to make the Harvey Wallbanger drink, Harvey Wallbanger cocktail. It is super easy and you guys are just gonna love it. Um, it's basically, thank you, it's basically a screwdriver with Galliano. So you've got orange juice, vodka, and a shot of this. And this adds a little bit of sweetness, but it, like we like we mentioned, it, it adds a little, um, of that anise, the, the black licorice, and a little bit of, I have some over here, um, um, vanilla, lavender. It's a really nice, actually, I think it was a half. Yeah, half, half ounce of the Galliano. And then grab some vodka, because you'll need this later. Don't let this scare you. The, well, the drink is definitely a little stiff, right? But um, one ounce of vodka, but this is all going to cook off when you get to the cake. So don't, don't be too afraid of the fact that we're putting booze in our, <laughs> in our cake. Okay. Then three ounces of orange juice. And then I'm just going to top it with ice. And it is going to be so yummy. So mom, normally we have, um, I do have a glass of red wine because normally Gia's Italian kitchen cooks with red wine. So cheers to mom. I know you're out there with your red wine. Um, but here is another idea uh, for tonight. So I'm just going to add some ice to this. 
And let's try this. Well, when I added the orange juice, everything kind of stirred in. That's why I did the liquor first. That's good. That's tasty. You guys should try that. So the other, the other um, drink that I that I tried um, off camera because it, it, it takes a little bit longer than making the Harvey Wallbanger is to make it old fashioned with the Galliano. So again, um, it's it's a little bit sweeter. It's a little bit thicker because it's a liqueur. But instead of adding the simple syrup into your um, your old fashioned. You add the galliano. That was tasty. So you could try that offline. That was that was good. If you if you like, um, you know, whiskeys, um, old fashions. Actually, you could do like a rum old fashioned or a tequila old fashioned and add that. Um, a lot of those galliano recipes actually use tequila, so you could try that. All right, let's check on the pasta. So to me, these these are kind of moving around like little snakes in the um in the water i'm gonna i'm calling it good are we close to five minutes yeah yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> so i'm gonna turn this off and my little strainer thing just turns and then i'm gonna dump the water so get your get your pasta strain and when you know when we're making um other pasta dishes a lot of times you're going to save the pasta water to add to the sauce we are not doing that tonight so you can just dump dump all that water from the from the noodles and just let it strain off and then i'm going to take the top off of this because i do want these to cool a little bit so that i can actually handle them when we start assembling them all right so while we're waiting for the vegetables to come out actually the tomatoes are done you should have about, yeah, about 25 minutes done on your timer for tomatoes. So I'm going to take those out and then add about another 15 for um, the roasted vegetables. I'm going to leave the roasted vegetables in. I'm going to take the tomatoes out and show you what these look like. Holy buckets. These are gorgeous. I'm not going to tip it too much, but can you see how they browned? There's, they're juicy, the garlic is roasted. Oh my goodness, those are gorgeous. So I'm gonna just put these over here because we want these to cool off. We're not doing anything with them yet. And then I'm gonna close the oven so that the roasted vegetables can finish. Oh, these are looking good too. All right. So don't touch the tomatoes yet, they're too hot. We don't wanna put them in the Cuisinart yet. So while we're waiting for those, we're gonna start um, with the cake. We're gonna not assemble it, but um, just start getting our stuff together. So grab your cake recipe and so we need three bowls. The KitchenAid is gonna be the first one. And then you need two other bowls because we're going to mix this stuff separately and that's going to kind of get this going and then we're going to leave those alone for a minute. And this is just my little recipe stand with the recipes printed out. I've got these on a little um, picture frame so that I can see them but they're not uh, not getting wet. It's an easel. What did I say? A picture frame. A picture easel. <laughs> it's a picture easel. <laughs> All right, you're right. Okay, so here comes the KitchenAid into the camera. And what we're gonna do is in the mixing bowl, we're gonna get the sugar, the butter, and if you have unsalted butter, we're gonna add salt. If you have salted butter, which I just buy salted butter because what's the point of unsalted butter? Like whatever, I mean, a lot. Of, if you're a baker out there, I shouldn't say that. I know there's a lot of bakers out there. They intentionally buy the unsalted butter because they want to control the butter. I'm more of a cook than a baker, so I just, I'm using the salted butter. It'll be fine. So, but if you have salted butter, do not add salt per the recipe. So, um, grab your sugar and your butter. Those are going in here. So let's do that now. And we're going to just kind of start the cake assembly to get us ahead. So our goal is when the lasagna comes out, the cake will be ready to go in. 
And the lasagna is not going to cook as long as a normal lasagna does because we are pre-cooking um, some of these vegetables. So it really shouldn't, um, you know, a lot of lasagnas probably take, you know, 45, 50 minutes or so in the, in the, uh, the oven. And this is not, I think we have slotted for like 35 minutes or something, 30. Okay, so butter going in, one full stick. And the sugar. So I'm using just regular granulated sugar. You can use cane sugar or, um, you know, stevia or whatever you want to use. Um, anything that's that's fit for baking um, should should be fine with a yellow cake like this. It really shouldn't matter too much. So we're going to add um, one and three quarters cup sugar. So I've got a half a cup thing here. And you want it to be pretty exact because we're baking, not cooking. So there's one cup. And a half. And then I am going to get my quarter because I don't want to wing it so that it cooks properly. Okay, there's my quarter cup. And then we're going to give this a little bit. Oh, could you um, plug this one in? I think I plugged the cuisinart in. Thank you. And we'll just let that go for a couple minutes to kind of let that incorporate. And that is it for the sugar for now. Oh, we can turn him on. Alexa, play Dean Martin. <laughs> Good call. I did that during one of the group classes, and um, it was a little too distracting because, well, so if you guys don't know, um, the other option for Gia's Italian Kitchen is to do um, a group class. And I did a group class. There was a gal, she had, um, and I think, I think a couple of you guys are on here tonight. They had, um, their, their kids were all over the country. And so we had a private session where they dialed in. And um, yeah, but Dean Martin was like really loud because I turn, in the group classes, I turn everyone's audio on and everyone's video is on so that it's very interactive because it's a private group and it was just us. Um, so I turned Dean Martin off for that because um, it was a little too much background. Alexa, volume down. There we go. <laughs> All right. Mm. Sip of that, yum. Okay, so bowl number two, we're going to add the liquids. So I use this, um, it's a big measuring cup. I, how many cups is this? This is a two cup, but it has a spout. So when we get to the point of combining these, this is, we're going to add the, the liquids pretty gradually into the cake mix, so um, that's why I like to use this. So we're going to add um, the orange juice, the galliano, the vodka, and the orange zest. So you can use um, regular store-bought orange juice. I'm going to actually use the oranges, fresh oranges. Because one thing that we um, are going to use is the zest. And the zest of the orange is really what has the flavor because it has the oils of the orange. Way more flavorful than the juice. Um, so I'm going to use the zest and then I'm going to use the juice of the orange instead of the store-bought. Okay, so actually I'm going to grab a bowl so I don't... Um, while you're making this up, why this cake was on the combo? Okay. Any reason? You know, I'm sure. I'm not really like a, like a food expert combo. What I did is I put out um, a few recipes for a vote onto Facebook. And I said, here are some options. What do you guys want? And I had a couple different Facebook um, groups going, some by email. And these got the top two votes of what people wanted to make. They wanted to make a vegetarian lasagna. Not vegan, because we're using cheese, um, but you can use vegan cheese. But And they wanted to make this this um, Harvey Wallbanger cake. A lot of people actually, um, you know, jumped in and said, oh, I remember that, that cake from my childhood or whatever. So, um, 
And that's how it came about. Kind of the whole idea behind the behind kitchen is the memories, right? Right, exactly. The memories of you and your your mom or your grandma or or just of your own childhood, absolutely. And and bringing those um, back to life in your kitchen, and and that's why like to cut up your vegetables, have your kids help because when you have the kids cooking with you, one, they're going to enjoy dinner better because they helped make it. But two, you're helping to teach them how to cook and how to um, become an adult because they have to learn how to cook. But it's going to create memories for you and your kid, kids, children, um, that they will remember. You know, I have vivid memories of cooking with my grandma. And um, those are memories I'll never forget. And that's really, you know, between my mom and my grandma, that's, that's how this got started. So... Uh, bring your kids in. Make them help you. And, you know, encourage them to help you. Cut up just a couple vegetables, and they will feel invested in the dinner. Okay, so let's get back to this orange real quick. I am doing the entire orange all the way around. You can see me turning it every couple seconds. Once you hit the white, stop. You do not want the white. It's bitter. You don't want that. So I'm just doing like a couple swipes, and then I'm turning the orange because I just want the beautiful orange from the peel. I do not want the inside. Okay, then I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna keep going here. So if you are using store-bought orange juice, put something in the chat. Ask me a question. Tell me where you're from if you haven't. Tell me what city you're in. Um, the other question that I want you guys to answer is, um, in addition to the group class, the next um, option coming up that this is kind of a precursor to is um, the next course. So if you were with us, I know some of you are, were with us in the first course. Um, oh, hang on just a second. Nadine, Mar, and Mom are drinking Prosecco. Ooh, yummy. Just yeah. so you know, Kelly. Awesome. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm back. Um, Prosecco with mango. Oh, Prosecco with mango. Good choice for tonight, ladies. Um, so in addition to the group class as an option, um, and I know some of you out there are local, I, I do those in person, or uh, if you're not local, we do them online. And you have a private session uh, with those group classes, you get to pick the menu. So that is another benefit of having um, that private session. So. In the uh, Facebook page, there's a link to my website, so you can check it out and read up a little bit more. Um, Are you doing anything for Valentine's Day for couples or groups? You know, that is an awesome idea for a Valentine. You can have a dinner party. Um, I had a group class uh, last week that was just a bunch of friends, but you could do a group um, for a Valentine's dinner and cook, and if you're here... A Galentine? A Galentine. <laughs> Uh, and and uh, yeah, we could make dinner together. So yeah, that's a great a great gift option or just a great cocktail uh, cocktail party dinner party option. Oh my gosh! Okay, I'm still zesting. We do want all three of these oranges because um, they are gonna just make the cake just taste so yummy. Um, okay, so that other option is that this is the precursor for tonight is. Um, the, the next course. So there's another three-part course coming up in the website um, end of February. So what I would also like you to do in the chat is tell me what you want to make. So I'm trying to make get the menu going um, for this class and you know I have a bunch of ideas of what I want to make but I would love to hear from you guys on some recipes that you want to make. So some of the things I'm thinking of are um, and my cousin out there, give me a hoot hoot in the in the Facebook, um, sautéed chicken with Italian cured black olives. Classic dish that my grandma and my mom used to make. I make it. It is amazing if you like black olives. But they're not black olives like you think of because they're Italian cured. They taste nothing like those canned black olives. So um, if you're feeling adventurous, that's a good option. Um, what did we make a few weeks ago? Oh, we made a carbonara. Ooh. 
Yeah, totally scratch carbonara with sweet peas and pancetta. Mm. That was amazing. So that's another option. What about um, tiramisu? Does anybody? Well, that's the best dessert. Real, like yes. A good tiramisu. We could yeah. do a tiramisu for dessert. Um, chicken marsala. We could do a chicken marsala. Yeah. Um, or, you know, it's winter. We could do a minestrone soup. I mean, there are so lots of options. Um, what was the other thing I was thinking of? Um, there's an asparagus tart that uh, a couple of my group folks out there made um, with me. It was amazing. So you have a pastry sheet and asparagus and a bunch of other things and some Italian herbs. That's a wonderful side dish. Um, so yeah, I want to I want to know from you guys what you want to make next in that course. Okay, so I've got all of my zest. So I'm going to put all of this in this two cup measuring cup here. How are we doing? Okay, our veggies. My veggies are about coming out in a minute. So I'm going to add the alcohol to these and then set this aside. So I have an idea. What's the best way to let you know? Yeah, put it in the chat. Because after this is over, I'll go through the chat and um, and basically kind of tally it up. So, you know, and I'll put a post out there and an email. Because um, in the next week or so, I need to at least figure out what we're making so that we can get things. Um, Is there when I send you an email if we're thinking about it? Where do we get a hold of you? Yes, so Gia's Italian Kitchen at gmail.com um, if you want to email us directly. That would be awesome. Um, or the Gia's Italian Kitchen Facebook page. Any high altitude adjustments for the cake? Oh, goodness. That's a great question. Probably yes. Um, I don't know those offhand. You're going to need to Google those. I don't know. I'd be guessing, so I don't want to guess. Um, I'm sure there is a high altitude adjustment. I don't know what it is, though. Um, we can try to find out um, I'm here on the sidelines. We'll look this up, and we'll get back to you in just a couple minutes. Um, okay, so where are we? Okay, so quarter cup of the Galliano going into the measuring cup. So this is going in the cake. Then, hang on, let me just grab the... Oh yeah, those look amazing. Okay, let's get those veggies out. And keep your oven on, because we are going to get this assembled and get the lasagna in the oven. Oh wow, okay, so here comes the roasted vegetables. So just set those aside so they can cool. And we're going to turn the oven down, I think just to 400, to 400 for, um, to cooking the lasagna. So do that. So that can adjust. And then let's just finish this bowl so we don't forget anything. So we've got the Galliano in here. We've got the orange zest, or the, uh, yeah, the orange zest in here. And then we're going to do a quarter cup of the vodka. Okay, then we're going to do the orange juice in there, but we'll do that after we get the lasagna going. So let's shift back to the lasagna. I'm just going to put these oranges up here with our orange zest. Get rid of this. Okay, so the tomato should be cool now, so we're going to shove this back. Can you unplug my KitchenAid and plug in the Cuisinart? And we're going to make the sauce. So plug in your Cuisinart, and your tomatoes should be relatively cooled off by now. And if you have that little one, you're going to do this in batches. If you have a big one, um, it'll just be... A little easier. So we're going to scoop all of this into the Cuisinart. And we're going to try to get every little bite of garlic, all the squishy tomatoes, and then we will dump the juices in once we get this all in here. Okay, using my fingers again. <laughs> It's messy, they're squishy, but it's going to make a beautiful sauce. And this is going to be totally different than what you guys are thinking of for marinara, right? Um, because our, our marinara, if you were in that first course with us, 
you know, has a lot of ingredients in it and it simmers on the stove all day. Um, this is not that. So once you get about maybe, you know, two thirds up, I would stop so you don't overflow this. And let's turn this on and give it a pulse. So we are totally liquefying this so you can pulse it or just turn it on because we do want this totally crunched up. It shouldn't take long because these are so soft. Oh. oh, can you smell it? It's gorgeous. Okay, so I'm going to grab another bowl just to dump this in so that I can do my other bath. Okay. How are we doing on time? Six. It's six. Oh, goodness. Okay. That's okay. You know, when I did the timing for this, I, I, uh, I hope you guys read the little cooking guide. There's just with all of these um, steps, you know, hopefully these are relatively easy steps, but there are a few of them to make this. I, I, I don't think we're going to be done before 630, but we're getting close um, to hitting that 630 mark. So we're going to put all of this in here as well. So we've got the garlic and all some olive oil and all these juices. So just carefully get all of this into your Cuisinart. Kelly, would you like me to lick the pan? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to set it right over here. You're welcome to come get it. Okay, let me just wash my hands here quick. And then our lasagna noodles are cooling, right? So we are almost ready to assemble. So Kelly, what are your tips, like you're multitasking so well, do you have any tips or tricks for managing this to get it done within five a reasonable time? You know, one thing that I do with, with all these courses um, is that packet of, of documents that I sent you guys. Um, the planning of it. The planning of it's really important. If you can just take like five minutes, I mean it takes me five minutes, it might, you know, not be that quick for you, but um, you know, if you can just take a few minutes to think about um, the, all of the dishes that you have to make and, and you know, put a sequence to it on what is going to take the longest to cook. Um, and that's kind of how I assemble that cooking guide so that, yes, we're multitasking, we're going back and forth, and some of you guys may not be used to that. Um, thank you, that was a great question, though. Um, you know, it's it's not as hard as it seems if you kind of think it out and, you know, I write it out in that cooking guide so that um, we can get this done as efficiently as possible. But you kind of do have to jump back and forth. Um, you can't just, I mean, you can, it's just going to take longer, you know, if you, if you are siloed with making the lasagna, making the cake or whatever you're making, it's just going to take a little bit longer. So I'm kind of... So with all of your courses, you, know, back and you forth. get the kind of breakdown of how to do it. Right. Yeah. So in all of the courses, whether it's the group class or um, the the um, three part course coming up in, at the end of February, um, you'll get all of this. You'll get the grocery list ahead of time, and then you'll get that cooking guide that steps you through all this multitasking, and um, and of course the recipes. So um, you know, and one of the the great things about the, the whether it's the course or the group class, we're doing it together, right? You notice. I don't have a pre-made lasagna to sh like show you like they do on on uh, TV. We're doing this together so that you're stepping through it with me and I'm showing you how to do it so that we all end together, you're successful, um, and um, it's a lot more fun that way. So let's get assembling. Kelly? Yeah. Do you want to mix the kale and the spinach with the vegetables to wilt it? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yes. So, spinach. Thank you, thank you. Um, see, that's why I need helpers. <laughs> um, that's why you need helpers, too. You need helpers in the kitchen. Um, so, spinach. I bought a spinach and kale mixture. Um, we're going to toss these with the roasted vegetables. Um, just because those are nice and hot, they're going to quick wilt these, and that's all we need to do. So, I'm going to just dump this. And I think the recipe, was it a two cups or so? Yes. Okay. Again, doesn't really matter for this. You can use less or more, or you could use zero. If you hate spinach and kale, that is that is totally fine. Okay, let me bring this. Oh, jeez. 
grab a hot pad if you're going to do that. Hang on a second. Let me just bring this over so I can show you. And I'm just going to grab a tongs here. And we're going to just gently kind of toss these so that you're getting the spinach underneath the vegetables so that the spinach warms up and starts to wilt. And the only reason we're doing this is so that we can fit all of this into the, las the lasagna pan later because we do want the spinach to be a little bit cooked. Um, you don't want to buy frozen spinach for this because that would be another option um, because that obviously is wilted, but that frozen spinach, um, which we've used in the past, like, right, we've used that to make, um, the spinach and beans side dish, which is amazing, but that accounts for the water. We do not want the water in this lasagna, so you do not want to use the frozen spinach here. This fresh spinach has enough water in it. Uh, we don't need the frozen to add to it. So you can see this is kind of wilting already a little bit. Okay. Okay, so this should continue to wilt a little bit because the pan is hot. So I'm going to just set this back over there. Oops. Put those back on. All right. So that looks pretty. Oh, it's really pretty. Okay, so let's get going. So grab your lasagna dish, and we're going to put a quarter cup of the tomato sauce down. Maybe a little bit more. What you want is just a thin layer to cover the bottom. So whatever size pan you're using, I have a 9 by 13. I'm just barely covering it so that um, the noodles don't totally stick to the pan. That's the only reason I'm doing that. And to get the sauce so it'll start absorbing into... Um, that bottom layer. Okay, so now let's grab uh, the, the noodles. And so there's all my noodles. And I'm going to try to get four of these in this bottom. So Kelly, sometimes you see those quick cooking ones. What do you think about that? Um. I mean, I would prefer to make these, but we don't, clearly, we don't have time for that yeah. on, on this uh, show. So, um, I mean, the quick bake would probably be fine. Okay. And you don't have to buy these and boil them. Um, I just think they're, they're closer to doing them homemade because there's more chemicals in the no-bake than in these. This is really just like flour and a couple other ingredients. Okay. There is chemicals in the no-bake because they're different, um, and I just don't want to eat those. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> so, yeah. Kelly, I also saw that you left the noodles cool without extra water. Like, I remember my mom pulling the noodles by putting in room temperature water. Is that an option too? Or so they don't stick. Rice? So they don't stick. Ah, okay. Um, it takes some of the starch away too, though. It takes some, but it also um, makes them more wet. And I want, I don't want more water in here. because you want it to suck it up. I, yeah. Okay. I want, I mean, yes, I had to kind of peel them apart. Um, but if they were full of water, I'd be putting the water in the pan. And then my mm -hmm. lasagna is going to end up really runny. And I don't want a runny lasagna. So I don't do that. But you could. You could if you if you wanted to. Um, you could add some olive oil to it, too. To, or um, toss them to get all the tomatoes. Yeah, you could do that because we're getting messy anyway. You could throw some tomato sauce in with the noodles just to kind of separate them. Yeah, totally, um, totally fine. Um, okay, so the, the other ingredients that we need are um, the ricotta and the cheese. Um, could you, I forgot to get my cheese. I always forget to do this. Um, right out the back door um, on the right. I, I did take it out of the freezer, but it's in the garage. It's on that little shelf. It's a big white bucket. All right. So what are your um, layers? So the layers are, we've got the sauce down, we've got the pasta down, we're going to add some ricotta, we're going to add, <laughs> here's my big bucket of cheese. So if you've seen seen an episode before, you you know this is my five pound bucket of uh, grated Pecorino Romano from the Italian store. Um, it's the best. So um, I've already got that ready to go. Um, and then, so the ricotta, and then we'll add the veggies. 
and then we'll sprinkle some cheese on it and we'll make a few layers. Um, so, I mean, it's a classic um, assembly of, we, I don't have an egg in here, because um, we're, uh, I don't know why, this just doesn't, she never, she didn't do an egg. So I'm doing just a thin layer of the ricotta on each noodle, and you want to do this on the noodle, not at a different point, point in the assembly, because you want to be able to spread it. Um, could you go in the fridge? Um, that top shelf, I have the grated cheese in a bowl. Kelly, can you show everyone? Because um, I just noticed everyone here stood up to see exactly how you were doing oh. this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And how much? Because I think I always over. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, you can use as again as much as you want. Um, I don't like this to be like over ricotta y. Um, so we, you know, I had you um, buy a container. I am not going to use this whole thing. Just because I think it, this is going to be rich because we've got the ricotta, we've got um, the grated fontina, and then we're going to add pecorino romano to it. The roasted vegetables have the olive oil in it, so it is going to be a really tasty. Um, you know, it's filling. It's so you don't need to add a ton of the ricotta, but add as much as you want. It's up to you. Okay, let's get the veggies. And. This is cooled down, so I'm going to just smooth some of this out of the way, please. And bring this over here. And then we're going to bring some of our veggies. Actually, I'm going to scoop them. Here's my scooper. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll just use a spatula. And we're going to put a thin layer of this, just covering this. So I will show you this in just a second. She want, somebody wants this moved so I can see what you're doing. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Good, good, good. Thank you. Okay, so again, kind of a thin layer because we are trying to get three layers of this. So here's my pan with the veggies on there. And then we're going to do some of the grated... Fontina. Now you can use any grated cheese you want. I just like Fontina because it has a nice flavor to it and it, it melts really nice. Um, you can use mozzarella or jack or you know whatever you want. Um, and then we're going to grab the bucket of Pecorino Romano. And I will move this bucket. Hang on just a second. And for this you can use Parmesan, Parmigiana Reggiana, or um, I like to use the Pecorino Romano just because that's what my grandma used to always use. Um, it comes from a goat versus from a cow, so it's a little easier on your digestion, but it also, in my opinion, tastes a lot better. So, um, preference, but that's, um, we always use the Romano. Okay, then the cheese, and then the sauce. So you don't need a ton of the sauce because at the end we're going to dump this whole thing on it and it's all going to marry together anyway. But we're just trying to get a little bit in each of the layers. Okay, then we're going to do another layer of the, the pasta. And just throw them right on your sauce. And if you want more pasta, you know, you can make these tight. I'm just doing three, but if you want to do four, so we're probably going to end up only using nine instead of 12. But if you want more of the noodles, you can squish these and make more, um, put more in. That's totally fine. Okay, then we're going to add the ricotta. And I'm just putting them again on the pasta so that I have somewhere to smooth them down without destroying my layers here. You know, when this cooks, this is all going to mush together, right? So um, this does not have to be artful <laughs> right now because um, it, it's certainly not going to come out that way. Okay, then the veggies again. Oh, this looks so good. You guys, it's going to be so good. How is yours looking? Is everyone up with me? Are you guys on layer two? So how wilted do you want the um, spinach and kale? Is yeah, I would have... It's wilted, but... 
More last. I would have liked it more wilted. I um, I should have tossed it sooner when they first came out of the oven. So um, obviously they're going to cook down, but our our um, layers we're going to be like up to the rim of this pan, and and that's fine. But um, ideally, I would have liked them a little more wilted, but that's okay. Um, cheese. So shredded cheese. And this is subjective too. If you love it ooey gooey, like when you pick up your fork and your melted cheese goes like this, add more cheese. Totally up to you. I'm just kind of sprinkling it on. You know, keeping in mind we've got three layers here, so you don't need, um, you know, a full cup don't put that for there. each layer. Yep, yep, hang on. I'm moving it, I'm moving it. Okay, Romano or Parmesan. This is really with the garlic, the cheese, the pecorino, or the Romano, or um, the uh, Parmesan. This is really what's going to give you the punch um, in, the, in the recipe. Okay, last it, or last layer. So grab, oh, sauce, whoops, sauce, little sauce. Oh, this is going to be really tall. <laughs> That's okay. So if yours is looking similar to mine where you're almost hitting the edge of your pan, um, what I would suggest is getting out another cookie sheet and maybe putting it underneath this in the oven um, so that you don't spill over. Or if you have like one of those silicone baking sheets, you could put that under here so that, um, oh, now this is sticking. And this is why you make extras. <laughs> this is why you make extras. Okay, I am going to add one more onto here because I kind of butchered that last noodle. There we go. Okay. And we're good. It's going to cut up. It's not going to matter, right? It's not going to matter. Okay, last layer. So ricotta. So I've used maybe half of this jar for all three of these layers, which I think will be plenty of creaminess once this all melts together. Okay, cheese. And you can add the rest of your cheese if you want here too on top. Should I just add the rest of this? <laughs> We want the gooey gooeyness, right? Okay, then our last scoop of the Pecorino Romano. And this is going to just be amazing. So, so be generous with this on top. So Kelly, you said you don't like the frozen spinach. Can you do anything with these vegetables now? Can you freeze them or do something with them on another plate? Or what are you going to do with this leftover vegetables that you have? Um... You know, you could add this to a soup. This would be a great soup starter because you've got the roasted garlic and olive oil on it. Um, you know, honestly, this since you've got all of this stuff out here right now, I would. What I'm probably going to do though is make another lasagna and okay. assemble the whole thing, not cook it, and stick it in the freezer. Okay. Because you've got all of these ingredients out. If you have any extra ingredients. Um, you know, you could um, make a little more of the tomato and get it. Because th this is, you know, this is what's taking us the time. And then you've got a whole nother dinner. So pre-assembling with the fresh and then freezing it would be fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so mine is not, um, like, overflowing. So I'm probably not going to do the, um, the pan underneath. But what you do want to do is get tin foil and put it over the top so that this doesn't burn because it is going to be at 400. So you do want to cover it and then at the end we will uncover it. So just cover that with tin foil and let's get that in the oven at 400 degrees. Who that's heavy. Awesome. Okay, that's in. So let's get some of this stuff out of the way and go back to the cake. Okay, so we want the timer for the um, lasagna 
for about 35 minutes. And if you want, the other option, if, you, if you're getting a little impatient, um, since it's covered, you could turn that oven back up to 425 and just go for like a half hour. So I'm going to do that because it will be, oops, it'll be totally fine in there under the tin foil. Okay, so I'm doing 425 um, for about a half hour. Um, oh, yeah, I did. I had um, a couple questions in the Facebook group um, on the cheese. So I didn't open this because I already had the cheese grated, but someone asked if um, this rind at the back should be included in what you um, shred, and it's not, or grate. You do not. You want to cut this off and then take the meat of the of the cheese. So that is, yeah, we don't need that. Okay, let's go back to the cake. So where are we with the cake? We've got the sugar and the um, butter in the, in the uh, KitchenAid. We have the orange zest and the galliano and the vodka in our uh, measuring cup. So, could you grab the oranges? Let's go. We need to finish this bowl. Thank you, ma'am. And you can use the store-bought oranges or orange juice. I'm going to use the fresh since I just grated these. Um, the other thing to consider is if you are not going to use these tonight, um, since we just took off the skin of all of these, these will only last a couple days in your fridge and then they will be gross. So use them for something, drink, make fresh squeezed orange juice or something to drink, um, but these will not last very long. Cheers, yum. <laughs> so check, the, check your oranges so that they don't have seeds in them. If they do, mine do not. Um, you may wanna squeeze this juice into a separate bowl first. Um, but I'm going to just put these right in my measuring cup. And if you get a little pulp, totally fine. doesn't matter. Oh. And if you get squirt in the eye, <laughs> be careful. <laughs> so you can use a juicer if you want, or you can just squeeze them with your hand. You just want to get as much juice out as you can. And we are aiming for... Since we added a quarter cup of the vodka and a quarter cup of the Galliano, I, this is going to go up to maybe a cup and a half um, by the time we get done with all these oranges. So you do want to stop when you get to about um, a cup and a half so that we don't add too much liquid to the cake. And I think we're going to be right spot on by the time we get all these. Maybe. Oh, maybe not. You know what? I might need that. I might need to splash a little orange juice in to get to our cup and a half. Let's see. Three, well, you know what? Mm, maybe a cup and a quarter. So we've got a quarter cup of Galliano, quarter cup vodka. No, I am going to need a little bit. You're going to a cup and a quarter, actually, right? Yeah, a cup and a quarter. So I need just a tiny bit of the store-bought orange juice. You know, it depends on the size of your oranges, right? How much juice you're getting out of them. Thank you. All right, so I'll toss those aside. And I, this cup has these little measuring things on them, so I can, that's why I'm not using a measuring cup, because I can see this right here. So I'm gonna get this exactly to a one and a quarter. All right, so that is bowl number two. So bowl number three, we need to get the rest of the ingredients for the cake. So, um, cornstarch, oh, that just means that it hit 425. Um, cornstarch, baking powder, and flour. So get those now. And we're gonna add the, the dry ingredients to a separate bowl. Then we will start putting this all together. So, where's my, there it is. All right, so of the, well, let's do the flour first. We need um, how much flour? 
Three cups. Okay. Um, could you also get the eggs out of the fridge? Um, there's four eggs in on the second shelf to the left there, kind of in the middle, actually. That egg thing right there above the milk. By the blueberries. Yep, it has four eggs. Okay, so we're going to put our three cups of flour directly into this third bowl. And you can sift it if you want. I don't sift it, and it um, for for a, a yellow cake like this, I'm not sure how much this matters. For some cakes, it it probably matters, but I don't think it does for this. All right, awesome. Thank you. Okay, so we just got our four eggs out. So just set those aside. We don't need those just yet, but very very soon. Um, grab some measuring spoons. And we need three tablespoons of the cornstarch. So the other option, um, if you have cake flour instead of all-purpose flour, do not add the cornstarch. So look on your package of the flour. That's the, the main difference between um, the all-purpose flour and the cake flour. So if you're using all-purpose, we are um, adding the cornstarch. And we're doing three tablespoons. So again... You want to level this off. Let me grab a knife so that this is exactly three tablespoons. And for you bakers out there, hopefully I'm doing this right. <laughs> Leveling it out. One, two, three tablespoons of cornstarch. Awesome. Okay. Then one tablespoon, this different one, and I'm just switching um, spoons because I don't want to co-mingle this baking powder with the starch in my container. Okay, so one tablespoon of the baking powder, not soda, and one teaspoon of the baking powder. All right, so that's it for the dry ingredients. So we're gonna just give these a little whisk together to incorporate, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this slowly into the mixer with the wet ingredients. So you wanna get that cornstarch and baking powder really incorporated into the flour as we add this in batches. So just kind of stirring it up to get it, get it all evenly divided. All right, then let's finish um, our first bowl. So in the first bowl, we have um, the sugar and the butter. We need um, the oil, vanilla, and the eggs. So I'm going to get some good vanilla and um, the olive oil or the olive oil, though. So Kelly, you said good vanilla. Tell us a little bit about me. Um, yeah, so I'm, I have Mexican vanilla. I don't know that that matters. Basically, if you look on the um, ingredients, if alcohol is like evaporated alcohol is the first ingredient, it's not pure vanilla. It's like vanilla, fake vanilla extract. Um, you can use that if that's all you have, but this is going to taste better because it's real vanilla vanilla from a vanilla bean. And brown over clear doesn't matter. Well, I think the clear is the alcohol. I think if you have real vanilla, it's not going to be clear. I could be wrong on that. Am I wrong? Oh, they're listening to my ice maker. <laughs> I think if you have the, the clear vanilla, that's the alcohol is the first ingredient. Okay. But check check the, bo the back of the bottle. Um, so we're going to have two teaspoons of the vanilla. So I'm going to put that into the standing mixer. Um, and if you don't have the standing mixer, you should have a large bowl with your sugar and your butter um, with your hand mixer. Okay, then we're going to add um, a third of a cup of oil. You can use vegetable oil. Um, you just don't want to use something that has a whole lot of flavor because this is really just for um, the, to kind of thicken and moisturize. It is not to flavor. So once the olive oil bakes, it's we're not going to taste it like we would taste it um, on the vegetables. But you don't want to use like 
um, sesame oil or, you know, you don't want to use any flavored oils because that will, you'll taste it. Okay, so one third cup. Um, but if you just buy vegetable oil or, um, you know, saffron oil or, um, those, those will be fine. Okay, so that's going right in. Then we're going to give that a mix before we add the rest of the stuff and kind of just get things incorporated here. Could you um, switch my plug, please? Thank you. All right. So, pardon the noise, but hopefully you've got noise going too. I'm going to turn this up. Awesome. So that actually looks pretty good. It kind of looks a little crumbly. Um, but soft because it's been sitting there for a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to start putting this together and then get the cake going. So my um, lasagna has about 20 minutes left on the oven, so we're, we're fine on time. Um, our goal, again, is just to have this cake in there when the lasagna comes out. So we're doing fine. Um, let's see. Uh, then what goes first? I guess it doesn't matter. Add, yeah, we're just going to add some of the, the flour first to the, so I'm going to turn this on low, and we're going to add a little bit of the flour, and we're kind of going to go back and forth with um, adding a little bit of each, so that looks nice. It looks like cookie dough right now, because it's really wet. And turn this on low so you don't go poof. You're supposed to add the eggs then one at a time. Before you add all the breads. Oh, okay. Well, we already put one cup of flour in there, so <laughs> it'll be fine. We're going to add a little flour and then we'll go to the eggs. And then we'll go back to the flour. Cool. Still a little crumbly, still looking like cookie dough. Okay. So let's go do an egg. Right, we're just kind of making a cookie dough, a cake dough. Um, you know, some of the recipes out there actually call for a box of cake mix instead of making this homemade. Um, you can totally do that as a shortcut. Um, I think that was probably a little bit um, of a novelty, you know, in the in the fifties because those um, pre-made, um, you know, TV dinners and boxes of this and that, those were new. And so, um, oh, this looks amazing. Yeah, I have a lot of, uh, oh, God, that orange sauce smells amazing. Okay, so let's keep going one egg at a time. But those box cakes were like um, a novelty back then, you know? Um, Oops, wait, mix. Okay, I'm going to get a spatula while that's going because what we want to do is also scrape the sides in between each of these so that we get this fully incorporated evenly. So it shouldn't be too big of a mess in there yet but it will be in a, in a minute or so. Okay, another egg. That's kind of the same thing with the spinach. Um, you know, those boxes of frozen spinach, um, if you were in the, the first course, we made um, spinach and beans, which is one of my grandma's, I, that's just like a total, memory um, for me of my grandma. So it's sauteed spinach with garlic and um, great northern beans, or you know, I guess you could use whatever, but um, great northern beans and a little red pepper. And it's such a yummy um, side dish, but she used a, the box of frozen spinach because that was the thing back then. They didn't have bags of fresh spinach and kale, you know, like we do today. So, um, that's what she used, and, and that was the thing back then. So, okay, this looks super yummy and creamy. It almost looks like frosting right now. Oh, yum. Okay, so 
Now we're going to add some of, well we added a little flour, but we're going to add a little bit more because now we've got all the eggs in there. And then we'll add some of that liquid. Let's see. There we go. Okay. So again, I'm low so you don't get a cloud of flour. And then as it there, now I can turn it up. It looks totally incorporated, so we're good. Okay, so now we're going to add um, about, a, how much are we adding in this? Half, 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 half of the liquid. So I'm going to about three quarters cup on my thing. Perfect. And then we're going to turn that on slow again. Be right back. Okay, turning that up a little, that's looking beautiful, okay, I'm going to scrape a little, I know my mom, mom, are you out there, you're telling me scrape, scrape the bowl, scrape the bowl, aren't you? <laughs> she needs to say hi. <laughs> mom and, and uh, my cousins that are out there, put, put something in the, put something in the chat, because I know you're out there. Okay, back to flour. So Kelly, you're more of a cooker than a baker. I'm more of a cooker than a baker, and you know, my grandma has a few dessert recipes, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm doing this and I'm following her recipe, but I don't have it up here. Like, I could make the sauce or, you know, a, a number of other dishes with my eyes closed. Um, but this, I need to follow the recipe because I, I don't make that. I don't bake that often. So yeah. What you're saying is following recipes, totally legit way to get it done. <laughs> yes. We're following the recipe. Yes. It's you know it's just when you think of Italian cooking, um, you know I had to really my mom and I had to really go through um, even the cooking recipes and write them down because a lot of them were in her head. Mm -hmm. And they weren't written down anywhere. And I had some of them, like I have her, um, her minestrone soup actually, is like chicken scratch. You know, I hand wrote this when I, decades ago when my grandma was still with us. And I wrote down, you know, feverishly what she was doing because it's not written down anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, the baking is because it's just different. You can't be like, little of this, little of that, add some more cheese, whatever, um, to the baking, right? It's mm -hmm. like a chemical reaction. So, um Yes, but uh, we have we have put all of the recipes to paper for you guys, um, so that you can follow the the cooking as well as the baking and uh, recreate those Italian recipes. So um, that that was really fun to to go through those and get them down on paper and test them, of course, right? Okay, so now I'm a little more liquidy, so I'm going to add the rest of the dry. Oh, I can smell that. Oh, what did I lose some? I lost Your mom and cousin are uh, enjoying their drink, so they can't chat. <laughs> <laughs> and Anne Lazine says hello from Chicago. Hello to Chicago. Let's see. Ask her if she's having a malort. I hope you're not having malort. Yeah. Don't ask. It's a it's a liqueur that you do not ever want to cook with. Do not cook with that. Okay, last slow on the adding of the flour. Okay, it's getting incorporated. I'm going to turn it up a little bit here. And actually, I'm going to scrape again, and then I'm going to do it. I'm going to turn this back on because some of my flour. So, what went consistency are we looking for? Um, you know, really, it's the consistency of a classic cake batter. It's thinner than a cookie dough. Um, That's funny. But um, it's really just a regular cake dough. Let me just mix this, and then I'll take the bowl off, and I'll show you what it looks like. And we're just mixing really to get it incorporated. We don't really need to, like, whip it because we're not making a meringue. We're not beating the egg whites or anything um, like some other 
cakes. We do have actually in um, the group session that we did the other day, um, I think a couple of you guys are out there too. Um, we made the Barozzi, um flourless chocolate torte where we whipped the egg whites and uh, made this just amazing um, chocolate torte. So that one, different experience with the KitchenAid, but not tonight. Okay, so here is my batter. You can see it looks really, it's a classic um, cake batter in terms of consistency, right? It's a little bit loose, but um, not like a cookie dough, just like a regular cake batter, really. Okay, so let's prepare the, um, the cake pan. So um, you can use a bunt pan, which is classically what it um, is served in. I'm actually going to use an angel food pan. Um, could you grab that on the kitchen table? Um, because, mm, yum. Because it has this magical way of coming apart, kind of like a springform pan, and it just, like, your cake comes out way easier. And it's going to cook the exact same as a blunt pan, but it's going to be easier to get, ooh, it's going to be easier to get the cake out. So I love this instead of the blunt pan. So what we do want to do is butter the heck out of this, though, so it doesn't stick. So grab some butter, and it does not matter if it is room temperature or refrigerated, because we're just going to spread it on. So my um, the way that I do this, again, my mom does it this way. I folded um, a paper towel into this little square, and then I'm going to take the butter, put it on the paper towel, I don't know, does everyone do this? Is this a secret? How do you guys butter your pans? Uh, I put it on a paper towel. You yeah, do? Okay. Like yeah. But you're Italian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not on fingers. I'm on fingers. Oh, fingers. Like, I'm on fingers all day long. Oh, that's funny. funny. And I'll yeah. take my paper towel and I'll just... Okay. Yeah. I mean, I have done that to get it even. Yeah, but so yeah, just I put it on and fingers. then I'm going to just... I roll. start with fingers. Roll up and down. And I'm German, so I guess The pan. Yeah. And then I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no, no licking. <laughs> so you want to get um, every little square into this because it'll help this the um, the outside crisp up just a tiny, tiny bit, but it's going to help this just to not stick. And you don't need to get like a crazy amount, but if you do, it's not a big deal. Just keep moving. It's not... Because we have the butter in the cake mix anyway, so it's you know you're not adding an ingredient that you don't want um, in your cake, so it's it's fine. Um, you could use olive oil um, or some other oil to do this, um, but the oil tends to run down the sides of the pan, and it's not really going to protect the cake from getting out. Like the butter does, so I would in in a cake situation, I would recommend the butter over the oil. The other option is parchment paper. So, um, you know, that, that flourless chocolate torte that I mentioned, um, we use parchment paper instead of the butter, and it works great for this. Um, I'm going to use the butter because I think it's just going to help keep that cake moist um, in addition to helping it get out. But if you wanted to use the parchment because you don't want to add more butter, you could do that. Do you ever flour your butter? Mm -hmm. I do not. Um, if the recipe calls for it, I do. This one does not. Because, in my opinion, all the flour does is add a starchy um, film to the outside of my cake that I don't want. I want the outside of my cake to be buttery and moist. I do not want it to be floury and, like, crunchy. So, I, I don't. I don't do the flour. Um, if you like that, go for it. Do the flour. Um, really, all that's going to do is help it come out better, right? So, if you want it, you can. Dropping that in. All right. Then we're just going to pour this right in there. You guys see me? Yeah. I'm going to just try to get this as even as possible. Let me turn this thing on a second. Because it is, you know, it's, it's a little bit thick, so it's not going to move too much once it gets in the pan. So you do want to turn the pan a little bit so that you can evenly 
get that batter in there. Okay, I'm almost, almost out. And then you can kind of just take the spatula and move it around a little bit just to get it even. Or you can kind of shake, shake the pan a little bit. That'll help it too. Okay. Let's see. Can I get as much of this in there as I can? All right. So I have um, about five more minutes on the timer for the lasagna. So we're going to just set this aside and it'll be fine um, sitting and waiting for a couple minutes. Again, if it was a, you know, some other baking item that had something whipped in it, you wouldn't want to have it sitting over there because it'll fall. This will be fine. So the last thing we need to make is the glaze for the cake. Um, so this is where if you don't want that alcohol, the glaze does not get baked. So um, you can omit the alcohol if you want because it is not going to cook off. Um, the anise flavor of the... Um, Galliano is really subtle in the glaze because there is other things going on. So grab your powdered sugar, your Galliano, and your vodka, um, a little bit of salt, and then we need the orange juice again. Um, so if you haven't had this, I would just follow the recipe to make the glaze. It is amazing. I promise you will love it. Um, and take a chance on the fact that there's the alcohol in it if you can do the alcohol. Um, it really is a lovely glaze um, and is not uh, super strong on that, that anise flavor that you might be thinking, Ooh, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, so Galliano, thank you. And vodka and orange juice, thank you. And powdered sugar. So powdered sugar is going to be the base. So we're going to add a cup of powdered sugar and then we're going to add the liquids really slow because powdered sugar, if you've ever made a glaze with powdered sugar, um, like if you add one drop of liquid to it, um, it drastically changes. So you want to add your liquid really slow so that this doesn't get too runny. And if it does, you just add more powdered sugar. It's not a big deal. Um, and then you just kind of go back and forth with the liquid and the powdered sugar until um, you have that magical um, consistency. Okay, so of the Galliano and the vodka and the orange juice. Let's do the orange juice first because we definitely... And if we need to add more liquid, I'm going to do the orange juice versus more alcohol. So one tablespoon of the orange juice and one tablespoon of the Galliano. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have to add more powdered sugar. <laughs> oh, whoops! I was thinking there was a thing on it, like this. You know, it's got the little pour spouts. Okay, my bad. Oh my word! Okay. <laughs> Like I said, add more powdered sugar. Okay, so let's mix this up. So it's getting, yeah, this is a little, little bit runny. So see how it's, it's well, it's a little thick, or I mean a little chunky, but it's a little bit runny because the what you want is for this, when we put it over the cake, for it to just slowly run down the edge of the cake. So you don't you want it a little bit thick, but not um, too thick. And if it has if it's too thin, it's not even going to stick. It's just going to like slide down your cake, and you don't want that. So I am going to add a little bit more like a powdered sugar. Like kind of consistency. Say that again. Like glue, like Elmer's glue. Like oh, yeah, that's a good comparison. Yeah, like glue, like Elmer's glue, like school glue. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so I added maybe a quarter cup more of um, the powdered sugar. And mixing this up. Oh, see, see, I think it's just too thick now. 
Ooh, well, good. no, that maybe that's good. good. Yeah, that looks good. So lift your spoon. Yeah, that's pretty good. So there you go. Okay, good consistency. Okay, so set that aside. This um, we will put on, obviously, after the cake comes out. So um, at this point, we are almost done. Because what we're going to do is take the lasagna out. Oh, it's for, oh, okay. So my timer's going off. What I'm going to do, though, we're not quite ready. We're going to take the tinfoil off and do five more minutes. So just carefully pull that out of your oven. Oh yeah. Oh, that's gorgeous. We're so lucky. It's gorgeous. And I'm gonna put that in, back in there for another five minutes. I am gonna lower the heat now to the 400. Now that um, now that I took that tinfoil off, because I don't want the top to burn. Um, and then when that comes out, the cake will go in. So um, when we do that, we are going to end um, our, our evening together so that you can eat uh, while your cake is cooking. So when the cake comes out, um, it's going to bake for about 45 to 50 minutes, and you'll want to lower your oven um, to the 350. So just check on your recipe for, for that instruction. So the, um, the end of the instruction for the cake is kind of near the picture, so focus on that now. Um, you want to check um, check the cake. Um, do not overcook it. So if you you know if you want to taste it or test it with a um, what's this called toothpick? Look <laughs> at toothpick. Um, if it comes out soaking wet, you want to put it back in the oven. If it comes out a little bit moist, you really want to just take it out because it will keep cooking a little bit when you take it out, and the consistency of the cake. Um, it kind of is like a pound cake. It's a really moist, dense cake. Um, so you do not want to overcook this because it will get dry. So um, after about 20 minutes of it resting, after you take it out, that's when you want to get it out of the pan, whether it's your bunt pan or your angel food pan, and glaze it after the 20 minutes because you want the cake to be warm so that this does its magic whoops, around, around the cake. Then let it sit for a little longer, and then you're ready to eat. So you'll do that on your own after um, after you eat your dinner. So just set this aside, and um, we just have a couple more minutes on the lasagna, and then you'll be ready to go. So when the lasagna comes out, you're going to want to let it sit um, for just about 10 minutes to um, just kind of cool a little bit and come together. Um, so the... Um, any excess liquids that are in the bottom, they should actually firm up a little bit, uh, so it'll be a little easier easier to serve. So um, that that is uh, close to the end for tonight. I hope you guys have had an awesome time, and I hope your roasted vegetable lasagna turns out amazing. Um, if you have not already, um, put in the chat where you're from, what city are you guys in tonight, and what would you like to see us make in that next course uh, at the, starting at the end of February. So I will uh, be posting, posting some, some questions to you in the Facebook page and letting you guys know the exact dates and the menu once we have some votes. Um, so uh, definitely please let me know what you guys would like to make. And if you're interested in a group class, um, we do those privately. Like I said, we can do them in person or we can do them online. Um, it's a great for, I've had uh, someone do um, a team building event with their work. Um, they did, you know, they had a few different cities of, um, uh, oh, for Valentine's Day. Yeah, so, you know, a work function, a, a friend's dinner, um, a Valentine's Day to, um, to cook. Uh, for, for a dinner party, lots of different ways, or, or just with your kids, you know, if you've got kids in different cities, um, or family and cousins in different cities, and you guys want to do a cooking class together, I would be happy to, um, to put together some, some menu options for you and really customize it for what you guys want to make. So um, check out the website and uh, email Gia's Italian Kitchen at gmail.com and let us know how we can help you guys. So 
Thank you so much for joining. Uh, we have one minute on the lasagna. So, um, Kelly, with the last minute, what was the inspiration? Yeah. Like, what was the grandma moment for this for uh, menu? Yeah, for the lasagna. Oh, for the lasagna? Yeah. Um, I don't know where she got this from. Um, if it was someone who didn't eat meat, but I don't even know if that was a thing back then. Do you have a special memory, though, with, um, that, with that lasagna? Oh, it was, it's probably around holidays, right, when, when you can't eat meat on Fridays. Because um, we would have the fish um, and, yeah, a vegetable lasagna. So lots of vegetable items around um, around. Italian holiday, Catholic holidays, so yeah, okay. um, and it, it's so yummy. You know, it, you, it. I remember thinking it was weird as a kid because it was not the classic marinara sauce and and the classic lasagna layers of meat and everything that you think of. But um, it's really a wonderful, um, a wonderful option. So yeah, that's that's I'm sure where it originated. Yeah. Um, okay, beeper, beeper's on. So let's get your lasagna out of the oven. And let me show you what mine looks like. So mine is bubbling on the edges, which is what you want. And if you want it, oh, oh, look at that. As long as it's bubbling on the edges, it's done, right? And there's no meat in here, so nothing is going to be uncooked. So I'm going to just set it over here. So how long do you let it rest? I would let it rest for at least, at least 10 minutes. So that it's not going to cool by then, but it is going to um, solidify a little bit um, because with all those tomatoes and and the vegetables, there is going to be some liquid in the bottom. So you do want to let it sit just a little bit before and serving. Don't finish the whole pan. How do you store it? How long does it last in your fridge? Sure. So you can put it in a Tupperware or you can put it in some tin foil. Um, it'll last for several weeks in your um, freezer you know maybe one week in your fridge um maybe a little longer since there's no meat in it though um you know a typical um leftover with meat i would say no longer than a week but since there's no meat in it it, it might last a little bit longer but fridge or freezer yeah and then if you have those extra ingredients and you want to make another pan assemble like we did and um don't cook it and just wrap it up tin foil maybe also in a ziploc and um throw it in the freezer and then you can just throw it in the oven when you're when you're ready for uh, a weeknight dinner. So that's it, guys. It's a little bit late, but I think it'll be worth it. Um, enjoy your dinner, and I hope to see you again soon. I'm Kelly with Gia's Italian Kitchen. Let's get cooking.